I'm Claire Ridgway, creator of the Anne Boleyn Files. I'm here today with Claire Cherry to discuss George Boleyn. Um, we've just written a book on George Boleyn called George Boleyn, Tudor Poet, Courtier and Diplomat, a biography of George. We also get asked about um, George Boleyn's um, early life, um, his education, and then also about his career. Well, we don't know much about George's early life, but um, I did some research into um, how boys were educated, how you know boys of his standing, um, boys from wealthy families. Um, it was traditional for boys to be educated at home, to have private tutors until about the age of 14. And then from 14 to 18, George probably would have attended university. Um, traditionally, he's said to have um, attended Oxford University, we don't know that for sure, we don't have the records, but Anthony Wood, writing in the 17th century, who did have access to records at that time, listed him as a scholar from Oxford University. So, perhaps so, it would definitely fit in with what we know of George's education, the fact that he, he was very well educated, um, he was fluent in French, he knew Latin and Italian, um, he was obviously very interested in, in um, literature and poetry and he could discuss theology as well, so he definitely had a very good education. Um, moving on to his career. The career part I think is quite often overlooked um, and there's a lot of focus on his sexuality and his marriage but he had a, an enormously influential career. Mm. Um, he was Lord Warden of the Sink uh, Ports from June 1534 onwards. Um, he was a Member of Parliament from February 1533 onwards. He was a huge part of the Reformation mm. Parliament. Mm. He also had a foreign career, he was a diplomat. Um, his first diplomatic mission was in October-November 1529. He went on six missions to France from that period until kind of the middle of 1535. And all of that does get overlooked, but I mean, he had a, a huge influence on the court. Um, he was a very, very powerful man. I think that is quite, a, quite often overlooked because of the way he is quite often portrayed but there's a huge amount of documentation relating to that. And I think people think that there isn't a lot out there about George because it just hasn't been collated mm, together before. Yeah. Um, but oh, there well, is there a massive some, amount. There was also um, convocation as well, wasn't there? Um, you know, he was trusted by Henry VIII to, to go to convocation and deliver those religious tracts. That was in 1531. Yeah, that was something that Henry would only have given to yes. someone that he trusted and, and he thought, was very young. and thought that convocation would listen to him yeah. as well. He was the, he would have been about 26, 27 at the yeah. time, um, and it and it shows how much trust Henry had in him mm. from a very early age. Yeah, and he obviously expected convocation to listen to George and be influenced by him. Yeah, or he would have so, sent him. Yeah. So I think, irrespective of who his sister was, because there is also a, a thinking that he got all of these positions purely because of Anne, and I yeah. think that's got to be nonsense. It may have influenced it, certainly yeah. in the early days, but he wouldn't have been given those roles had he not been more than capable of performing yes. them. Yeah, definitely. And, and moving on with that, I think we had um, questions about um, Henry VIII and his relationship with George, well Henry VIII definitely wasn't a man to suffer fools gladly and the fact that we have all the records in privy purse expenses of um, George gambling and you know playing sports and that with Henry VIII, you know Henry could choose who he spent yes. his personal time Whoever's, with. Whoever were their yeah. sister. <laughs> and there's no way he would have been playing cards no. and tennis and shovelboard and, and that with, with a person that he really didn't like. Yeah. So I think he liked him and respected so. him. There, there was, um, in, I can't remember which mission it was now, but he, when he went to France, but the instructions to him do say, one, that the king um, especially loveth and trusteth. Yes, that's And right. he made a point of saying that, so yeah. I think he thought very highly of He could of have him. just signed off that yeah. letter without saying that. Yeah. yeah. 
Claire and I would uh, just like to thank everyone at um, the Amber Lynn Files website for asking us the questions that have inspired this video today. Um, thank you so much for giving us these questions and this chance to talk about one of our favourite yes. characters, George Boleyn. Um, our book will be coming out very soon. Um, George Boleyn, Tudor poet, courtier and diplomat and we hope it will be well received and that people will be interested in hearing more about George. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye.